This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Award season, it has begun! From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got More Free Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So the Oscar nominations are in. Yep. But since I like to see how the other awards go before picking a horse, oh. I thought we would talk about award shows in general. And we'll do a future episode with yeah. our actual nominations. Yeah, this sort of came up after watching the Golden Globes yeah. this time. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a train wreck that was. Yeah, there's Miss Q, there's lousy writing, but there's always lousy writing. Presenters openly mocking the event. Yeah. <laughs> Host Ricky Gervais clearly did not want to be there. And he you was know, like, he was like... This is what I don't understand. He didn't have to be there. I mean, did they just throw so much money at him? He's like, I'm daring you not to bring me back next year. Please don't bring me back next year. This is such a joke. (laughs) But the Golden Globes goes back to 1943. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association, who's... Uh, various foreign press who cover Hollywood. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty self-explanatory. there's not that many of them, actually. No, it's a very small group. Very small number. They created the award to generate funds for charity. Mm -hmm. And there's a history of controversy about the Golden Globes. Potential winners were, at least at one point, told in advance that they were winners, so they would show up, and also told it might go to someone else if they didn't show up. Yeah. (laughs) And there's been rumors of payola and lobbying for nominations and the winners. Yeah. In fact, the FCC got so annoyed at the whole thing, they got NBC to stop broadcasting it in the 60s and 70s. Because they said, we're we're uh, telling the public this is an actual award, award show, show, and it's really not. Yeah. <laughs> in 1982, Pia Zadora won New Star of the Year after accusations that her millionaire husband bribed members of the Hollywood Foreign Press. <laughs> they don't give new star of the year anymore. Well, technically she wasn't a new star because it wasn't her first film. I know. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> the Tourist won Best Musical Comedy in 2011, which was a spy thriller. Not a, a musical or comedy in the least. Just like The Martian. Martian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this year. But, you know, they say that it's, oh, we just let the... People who yeah. made the movie pick what category it goes in. Well, you can't do that. And I'm sorry. You're gaming the system. Yes. <laughs> like, well, we think we have a better chance at, at comedy than we have, so we'll just put it in comedy, even though it's clearly not. Just like, you know, they take people who are clearly leading <laughs> actors and put them in supporting <laughs> nominations so that they get a better chance to win. Yeah. For The Tourist, Sony gave members of the Hollywood Foreign Press, they flew them into Las Vegas and gave them a private share concert. <laughs> uh, it's sometimes a fun show, and it can be an Oscar indicator. Yeah, well, you know, the, the stars all say it's a fun show because they get to drink a lot, right. you know. Yeah. And so that can be fun for them, but sometimes it's not that fun watching a room full of drunk people. And it's also one of the few awards in which you have both TV and movie people yes. together. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the movie people are... Given the the best, the prior, uh, the best thing, seats and yeah. you know the TV people yeah. in the back, whatever. Yeah. We also have the New York's Critics Circle Awards. That's a fairly good indicator. Mm-hmm. It started in 1935 and it spawned similar awards in other major and minor cities. Mm-hmm. For example, there is a Central Ohio Critics yeah. Choice Award. <laughs> That one does not get any national yeah. coverage. <laughs> There's also a Critics' Choice Awards, just in general, mm-hmm. that was started in, in 1996. Yeah. There's awards for individual roles in the industry. Yes. There's the Directors Guild Awards mm-hmm. in 1948, started in 1948. Mm-hmm. The Writers Guild, 1949. Producers Guild, 1989. Screen Actors Guild Awards in 1995. Mm -hmm. Now, the DGA, the WGA, and the PGA Awards are fairly good Oscar indicators, at least in the last 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good indicators. SAG Awards, not nearly as much. Yeah, I think that actors tend to vote more for their friends, so... (laughs) yeah. Now, some of those you can actually watch on cable or right. internet, you right. know. I mean, most of them aren't on na- networks, yeah. you know, broadcast, but you can watch them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's the granddaddy, the Oscars. Started in 1929, and that first ceremony lasted 15 minutes, mm-hmm. and it cost five bucks to get in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, $5 to 
course, in 1929, was yeah. still a bit of money. A bit of money, but still. Yeah. <laughs> Newspapers were originally given the winners' names in advance, and then they were given an embargo to hold them until after the ceremony was over with. Yeah, just like they told us not to read the Harry Potter books in the back room before the release date. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> until the L.A. Times published them early. And this is when they started the secret envelopes in 1941. <laughs> Thank you, Price Waterhouse. Yeah. <laughs> the actual statues have an encumbrance against them. Since mm -hmm. 1950, winners agree to allow the Academy to buy them back for a dollar. And that's because too many people were, like, going bankrupt and selling and they're, they're them. And they're selling them, yeah. Yeah. And if they don't agree, they're, not, they're given the award, but then they take it back yeah. and they're not allowed to keep it. Yeah. So NBC got the TV rights for the Oscars, starting basically when they started putting it out as a broadcast, 1953 mm -hmm. through 1960. In the 1960s, ABC had the rights, and then NBC has basically done it since then and has a contract through 2020 mm -hmm. to do it. And I'm sure they're going to re-up that if they possibly can. Yeah. Bob Hope holds the award for most hosting duties mm -hmm. at 19 times. Followed by Billy Crystal at 9, Johnny Carson at 5, who was very popular in the 70s as the host, uh, Whoopi uh, Goldberg at 4, and Jack Lemmon also at 4. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's better when it's hosted by a TV person rather than a movie person? I think that helps because they're a little more... Used uh, to that kind of environment. Right. The, yeah. yeah. Movie stars are like... You know, they don't have. They they're not performing to a crowd. They're performing to a camera, a and cam they get many takes. And, yeah, and, um, and to do something live, that's a lot well, harder. Or even if you're doing it on TV, a lot of those people, if you're not on a live show, are still more used to teleprompters right. and that sort of thing. So yeah, you can tell the people doing the presenting are just like, okay, what? what? <laughs> Webster's Dictionary defines cinematography as... <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. There was, I think, one point in the Golden Globes this time when, when one of the presenters said, Who the hell's running the teleprompter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Now, if you have refused the Oscar, writer Dudley Nichols in 1935 for The Informer, it was all due to conflicts with the Writers Guild, apparently, at the time. There was some conflict going mm -hmm. on. George C. Scott, in 1970, who won for Patton, called the awards a meat parade <laughs> and refused to attend. Marlon Brando, in 1972, for The Godfather, because of the film industry's mistreatment of Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And he sent Shaheen Littlefeather to read a 15-page screed at the awards on his behalf. And this began both the I Have a Cause winner speech uh -huh. and the play them off music. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you, Marlon. <laughs> and there's also concerns over bias that have cropped up again this year. Oscar's so white. Yes. <laughs> Is it more an issue of the Oscar voters or Hollywood as a whole? Well, you know, I'm, I'm tending to think Hollywood as a whole since the... They also are, you know, talking about the films that weren't nominated and how, um, you know, it's because, you know, these are the things. I don't know if you saw there was a clip that uh, one of the talk shows did about, here's what you need to do to be a black movie to get an award. <laughs> you know, you have to have at least one spiritual song. <laughs> there has to be references to slavery, you know. So, yep. So, um, you know, it is kind of sad when there's a formula for winning an Oscar if you're a minority. But I think there's a formula for winning an Oscar if you're white, too. So. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, certainly, and we'll talk about this when we get into the nominations later, but yeah. that the whole idea of, you know, if the actor died, yeah. if they, uh, if they're in their role, they portrayed some sort of disability. Or ugly. <laughs> or being ugly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you know costume dramas tend to to do better than, than regular so, <laughs> period dramas. So, yeah, there, yeah, there's absolutely a formula. And as long as the the Oscar voter pool is generally much older, yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be the case. Yeah. It'll <laughs> it, always be older. Right. But they'll have different prejudices in 20 years than they do right. now. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So, well, right now, you guys should look over... 
the Oscar nominees and make your picks, mm -hmm. and then you can compare them to ours right. when we make our predictions in a, in a couple episode. weeks. Yeah. In the meantime, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>